The shoulder is a complex joint. It has bones with complex anatomy. It's all lying long, the only horizontally lying long bone via the side. It's um, subcutaneous hair that has two surfaces, costal and dorsal. It also has borders and angles. So, um, this is the scapula, and you need to appreciate the parts, free angle, and free angle. Infraspinous, fossa supraspinous. This is the spine, a chromion, the coracoid process, the glenoid cavity, the supraglenoid and infraglenoid tubercle. This is the lateral border, the middle border, inferior angle, and the superior angle. That's the coracoid process, the chromion, supraglenoid, infraglenoid tubercle, glenoid cavity. This is the anterior surface, where so this is the subscapular fossa. This is your suprascapular notch. This is the um, middle border and the lateral border of the scapula again in humerus this is the head anatomic neck the surgical neck this is the bicipital groove or intertubercular sulcus between the greater tubercle and the lesser tubercle and this is the shaft to the delta tuberosity and posteriorly it contains the radial um, groove so this is the coronoid fossa Trochlear articulating with trochlear natural ulna, capitulum articulating with the radial head, that's the lateral epicondyle. The medial epicondyle is more um, prominent than the lateral epicondyle. Deltoid tuberosity for deltoid muscle or lacrimal fossa posteriorly. Okay? So those are the parts of the humerus. So there is an angle of inclination, remember 130 to 150, and an angle of torsion that is 30 degrees posteriorly. So the shoulder is a complex, has complex articulation. There's a glenohumeral joint, there's a scapulothoracic, a chromoclavicular, sternoclavicular. All these are within the shoulder joint complex. Sternoclavicular is a saddle synovial joint, a chromoclavicular is a planar synovial joint, glenohumeral is a ball and socket um, synovial joint. The, uh, the scapulothoracic is a physiological joint. So the uh, this is the glenohumeral joint formed between the head of the humerus and the um, glenoid cavity of the scapula. And the cavity is deepened by a fibrocartilaginous labrum around it. So we have ligaments in the capsule and uh, in the joint, glenohumeral joint, and this ligament of the capsule. So we have coracohumeral ligament, glenohumeral ligament. Glenohumeral has parts, superior, middle, and inferior glenohumeral ligament. So this is the coracohumeral from coracoid to the humerus. Then the glenohumeral ligament. We have superior glenohumeral ligament, the middle glenohumeral and inferior glenohumeral ligament. This is the coracoid process. Okay. And this is coracoclavicular ligament, coracochromial ligament. So the scapulothoracic joint is not really a joint, rather considered a physiological joint. It's not articulation between two bones. It's bone, scapula, and the muscle. So we have the coracoacromial arc. Okay, coracoacromial arc. It's also called a suprahumeral arc from the coracoid process to the acromial process of the clavicle. So it's an osteoligamental root, okay, and stabilizes or protects the joints superiorly. So we have basa in the shoulder, supraspinatus tendon. Beneath it, you have subacromial basa. So this is your subdeltoid basa. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we go to the muscles in the shoulder joint complex. You have levator scapulae from C1 to C4 to the medial border of the scapula innervated by nerve roots C3 to 5 and causes elevation of the scapula and also the traction. Then you have rhomboid major, okay, it's from um, T2 to T5 spinous processes while rhomboid minor is from ligamentum nuclei, leg vertebra, up to C71 spinous processes. So in a, uh, insertion, rhomboid major is on the medial border of the scapula between the spine and inferior border so this is rhomboid major this is rhomboid minor medial border at the root of the spine so rhomboid minor is smaller this is rhomboid major so rhomboid major from t2 to t5 while rhomboid minor is from the ligamentum nuclei up to t1 innervation of rhomboids dorsoscapular nerve 
trapezius. Trapezius which comes from occipital protuberance, then the medial third of nuchal line and upper part of ligamentum nuchal up to C7 spinous process. Okay, what does it? Uh, where does it start on the posterior border with lateral third of clavicle as well as the acromion? It's innervated by spinal accessory nerve and it causes elevation of the scapula and retraction of the scapula as well as it rotates the head to the opposite side. Also causes lateral flexion of the head to the opposite side. Those are superior fibers. Now the middle fibers come from inferior part of ligamentum nuchae and T1, T5 spinous process. It inserts onto the medial margin of acromion process and superior lip of the scapula. It also innervated by spinal accessory and causes retraction of the scapula. Then the inferior fibers of trapezius are from T6 to T12 spinous processes insert onto the tubercle at the apex of the root of scapular spine. Also innervated by spinal accessory nerve and now because it's below, it will depress the scapula, causes retraction and upward rotation. Serratus anterior comes from the outer surfaces and superior border of first to eight ribs and inserts on the ventral surface of the medial border of the scapula. It's innervated by long thoracic nerve. It causes scapular protraction and upward rotation. Lower fibers can cause scapular depression and upper fibers can cause scapular elevation. Pectoralis minor from the surface of um, three, rib three to five and insert onto the coracoid process. Innervated by medial pectoral nerve, it causes scapular depression and downward rotation and protraction. Then we go to glenohumeral uh, muscles. The biceps break a short head from coracoid process, long head from supraglenoid tubercle. They insert on the radial tuberosity and biceps uh, break aponeurosis. Innervated by muscular cutaneous nerve, they cause shoulder flexion, elbow flexion, and supination of the forearm when the elbow is flexed. Coracobrachialis, coracoid process to the medial surface of the mid shaft humerus opposite the delta tuberosity innervated by musculocutaneous nerve and it causes glenohumeral joint flexion and adduction. Pectoralis major, well, it has three, uh, sorry, two origins. You have a sternal um, origin from anterior surface of sternum and cartilages of rib one to seven or six and a clavicular portion from the anterior surface it insert on the crests of the greater tuberosity of the humerus. Peck major comes from the lateral lip, or rather inserts on the lateral um, lip of the bicipital groove. So the sternal head is innervated by medial pectoral nerve, while the clavicular head is innervated by lateral pectoral nerve. It causes adduction of the glenohumeral, okay, and um, internal rotation. So this is the pectoralis major muscle. Deltoid has three uh, parts. The um, anterior deltoid, anterior deltoid. So one uh, anterior deltoid coming from the anterior border, okay, and superior surface of the lateral, lateral third. So anterior border is innervated by axillary nerve, and since it's anteriorly, when it contracts, it will cause. It. Then its middle fibers are. Um, are going to from the lateral margin and superior surface of the acromion up to the delta tuberosity, also innervated by axillary nerve and cause glenohumeral joint abduction and mainly abduction after 15 degrees. The first 15 degrees abduction is by supraspinatus muscle. So then you have posterior fibers of deltoid. These ones they come from the inferior lip of the posterior border of the spine. This is the spine of the scapula. So inferior lip of the posterior border up to the deltoid tuberosity, also innervated by axillary nerve and cause glenohumeral joint extension. If it contracts, it will cause the arm to come posterior. That's extension of the glenohumeral joint also causes abduction and external rotation of the glenohumeral joint. So um the triceps brachii 
triceps it has. So the long head is from the you know, tubercle. The lateral head is lateral and from the lateral and posterior surface of proximal half of the body of the humerus. The medial head is distal two thirds on the medial and posterior surface of the humerus. So it inserts onto the olecranal process of nerve and causes extension at the glenohumeral joint and adduction. And at the elbow, it also causes. So the triceps um, at the dorsi originates from the posterior layer of <laughs> the lat originates from posterior layer. That's and also lumbar and sacral vertebrae. So latissimus dorsi originates from the iliac crest, thoracolumbar fascia that's attaching onto ribs T6 to T12 up to lumbar and uh, sacral vertebra, and also the external lip of the iliac crest and ribs 9 to 12, as well as the inferior angle of the scapula. It inserts in the intertubercular groove, okay? So it's within the intertubercular groove and is innervated by thoracodosal. It's usually called the lady between two majors. It's inside the intertubercular groove, but it's in between pec major and teres major. Pec major is on the lateral lip of the bicipital sulcus, while um, teres major is on the medial lip of the bicipital sulcus. So what does latissimus dorsi do? It causes internal rotation at the glenohumeral joint and also adduction and extension at glenohumeral joint. So if it contracts this way, you pull the humerus posteriorly and that leads to um, external rotation and um, also causing adduction by pulling the, sorry, um, if you pull the humerus posteriorly, you cause extension, but you also, since it's pulling towards the body, it will cause some element of internal rotation and adduction. So the next muscle is um, teres major muscle. So teres major is a uh, help of latissimus dorsi. It comes from the dorsal surface of the inferior angle of the scapula, okay, and the lower third of the scapular lateral border. Then it inserts on the crest of the lesser tuberosity. Remember we said it's on the medial lip of the bicipital groove, while pec major is on the lateral lip. Uh, latissimus dorsi is within the bicipital groove. So latissimus dorsi is the lady between two majors. Teres major is innervated by lower subscapular nerve. And if it originates here and inserts here and it contracts in this direction, it will lead to internal rotation, adduction, and pulling the humerus posteriorly. So you end up with extension. So rotator calf muscles are made up of supraspinators, infraspinators, um, um, teres minor, and subscapularis. So supraspinators originates from the supraspinous fossa above the spine and inserts on the greater tuberosity, the superior part of greater tuberosity of humerus. It's innervated by suprascapular nerve and it's the one that initiates shoulder abduction. It causes the first 15 degrees abduction at the shoulder. And being a rotator cuff muscle, it stabilizes the humeral head in position. Number two, rotator cuff muscle infraspinators and this is from the medial two-thirds of the infraspinous fossa to the middle portion of the greater tuberosity, also innervated by suprascapular nerve. And when it contracts in this direction, it will cause glenohumeral joint, um, um, external rotation. And being as rotator cuff, it will stabilize the humeral head. Teres minor is on the upper two-thirds dorsal surface on the lateral border of the scapula, then goes to the lower portion of the greater tuberosity. So supraspinators, infraspinators, teres minor, in that order, from superior, middle, and lower part of greater tuberosity of humerus. It's innervated by axillary nerve, also causes external rotation at glenohumeral joint when it contracts towards that direction. And it, being a rotator cuff, it stabilizes the head of the humerus. Subscapularis is on the subscapular fossa anteriorly, and it starts on the lesser tuberosity of the humerus and anterior capsule of glenohumeral joint. It's innervated by both upper and lower subscapular, and causes internal rotation at the glenohumeral joint, stabilizing the humeral.